Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to a second channel video. Today I have some great news for those of you who like disputed borders, which is the squiggly line on the map that represents where legal control might end, but where official control is a bit more vague, uh, because there is going to be a lot more of this happening soon. You might have heard the news this week that Russia is probably going to be annexing Ukrainian territory, but today it was confirmed that it will be happening tomorrow on Friday. Russia will be formally annexing four more areas of Ukraine. There'll be a ceremony, Putin will be uh, holding a, a signing ceremony on Friday, to announce that these areas will be officially joining Russia, even though the self-styled referendums were condemned by Russia and the West as a sham. And this is a really interesting story, right? I mean, Russia is going to be growing. Ukraine is going to be losing 15% of its territory. Just to clarify, this is the 15%, the areas marked in black here. They're going to be losing a part of their territory, which, you know, 15% doesn't sound like much, but because Ukraine is so big, that is an area the size of Portugal or Slovakia, roughly, that is moving from Ukraine to Russia. Russia, at least as far as Russia's declarations can go, because here's the fun thing. Annexing is a thing that has happened all throughout history. You take in part of another country, you make it part of yours. You're the ruler now, you're the man with the big stick, and so it's your country. Uh, however, it's something that is, uh, you know, like, uh, going to be, you know, you usually need people's support that you've actually done that, and whether Russia will get that is a very different question. Also, the reason it says formally annex as opposed to annex is because technically these areas have been under Russian control for quite some time. As you can see, this is the, uh, red line, uh, everything in red is uh, controlled by Russian military. They, ha they have, even though it's not been legally a part of Russia, there have been Russian soldiers there, like, keeping the peace you know, ironic because it's a war. Uh, there have been Russian soldiers there who have been in charge of the area, but now they're going from being just like in charge to saying, oh yeah, this is a part of Russia that we are defending. And so, uh, you know, like areas that were, you know, in, in the same way that like, I don't know, in the Iraq war, uh, there were American soldiers there, but Iraq wasn't an American colony or, you know, my favorite British colony of Northwest Germany, uh, we, you know, it, this was only true from 19, 1945 to 1949. It was just occupied you know, it was uh, temporarily being controlled by, with the key intent of giving it back to whoever was in control. And so, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, in, in a better world, maybe, uh, you know, the, what, what happened here, right, is uh, the UK was temporarily occupying these territories and then gave them back to Germany. And what happened here is Russia was temporarily, uh, you know, like occupying these territories and then gave them back to Russia. Wait. Okay, I see where the mistake has been made there, Mr. Putin. You know, quick, he's gonna sign it tomorrow. Someone needs to let him know these were actually areas of Ukraine. But the reason that he's out, uh, annexing these areas, officially, I mean, there's there's much more on the probably why, but the official reason is that all of these regions, uh, not only have they voted for independence, but the leaders in these regions are saying, yeah, we would like you to annex us, Mr. Putin. Please uh, add our territory to Russia. And this is where things kind of get a bit more messy. So the background behind all of this is that Russia uh, is a country that dwarfs Ukraine. When Russia tells Ukraine to do something, Russia expects Ukraine to do that thing. And so in 2014, when Ukraine started drifting slowly towards uh, Europe, uh, slowly towards the EU, more than Russia as a partner, uh, they took a bit of Ukraine, uh, uh, this is Crimea right here. And so over the last, uh, you know, few years, uh, things have gotten more and more tense between Ukraine and Russia, mostly because Russia took a bit of Ukraine and they said, hey, if you want us to be friends, you can't just take our territory. That's not... It's not how friendship works at all. And so uh, Ukraine's been moving further and further towards the West. And so Russia's reaction was, okay, what we're going to do, we're going to start a war or a special military operation, whatever you want to call it. We're going to uh, invade. We're going to take the entire country. And if you look at the size of the population, the size of the land area, honestly, even the size of the military, it is amazing that Ukraine didn't just crumble on day one when you compare anything militarily between these two countries. Uh, but, where, you know, they, they figured like, okay, we'll just take the the country will install a new leader you know none of this uh, TV Zelensky guy, you know, we don't need a comedian in charge. We want a pro-Russian in charge. And so that's what they figured they'd do, except that didn't happen. Even though they tried to take the entire country, they didn't succeed. And in fact, the crazy thing, if you look at this map, you can see red areas are controlled by Russia. Purple areas are areas controlled by Russia, now controlled by Ukraine. For the past couple months in particular, it hasn't just been stalemating. Ukraine has been making gains back into their own territory. And so this is where, if you're Putin, you might panic. Like, oh God, we were really really meant to achieve this, how did we not, like, it, you know, even if you argue, like, well, it's NATO weaponry that's uh, helping out the Ukrainian soldiers, it's like, still, even with all the weaponry in the world, somehow we're getting destroyed by a country that is this, you know, like, uh, this much smaller, that we see as a subordinate to us, that we see as our, our, our lesser, and so, uh, you know, like, there are two ways you go forward. One is you go back bigger on the advance, and there has been
been more uh, recruitment drives to get more Russian troops in there. Uh, but the second way is you say, okay, we're not taking the whole country. What's the second best goal? Well, uh, the second best goal would be taking some of the country. And even better, the, 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 the second tactical reason for this is by officially taking the country. Right now, it's just occupied, like I said. It's not Russia, even in Russia's eyes. Until tomorrow, uh, on Friday, when they, they do the ceremony with the big flag and the banner and the, and the signing over areas of Ukraine over to themselves. Even in Russia's eyes, this is a part of Ukraine. They're just doing special military things in. Uh, but the moment this becomes Russia, now that makes things very different with regards to the war in Ukraine. Can Ukraine be sending soldiers into Russian territory? Uh, can anyone be you know, helping out in Russian territory? Uh, that is something, you know, like the every country that has nukes basically promises we'll only use them to defend ourselves. Once this becomes Russia, now Russia can use the nuke threat if anyone tries to come in there. If Russia, uh, you know, like a yeah, even if uh, you know it's Ukrainians trying to take back their country, in Russia's eyes, it's like no. If you're if the Ukrainians decided to march for Moscow and they actually look like they were going to, maybe Russia would use a nuke in self-defense there. And what's the difference between Moscow and Luhansk in you know Putin's and Russia's legal eyes? I mean, the actual difference is a lot because even though uh, you know even though you might have heard that there were referendums, I mean, <laughs> in Western press it's mostly described as sham referendums. Maybe fairly, uh, that you, even though there were referendums, uh, these referendums were mostly conducted uh, under not very fair consequences. And the, the biggest reason why is Russia doesn't even control all of the territory which it was conducting these referendums in. All of Luhansk is controlled by Russia right now, and Luhansk had referendums as early as like 2014. Uh, it's, it's, there is no doubt that even under a fair referendum, it wouldn't be 96 to 3%, but even under a fair referendum, Luhansk would probably support some form of independence or closer relationship with Russia. Uh, they actually said something along the lines of like, okay, we want federalization of Ukraine in 2014. But again, I think they would take Russian control right now. Maybe, probably. Again, that's that's debatable. But all of the other regions, because uh, again, there there is like a tiny bit of maybe truth to that. And so this is self-determination for the people of Luhansk, but during a war and at this time, it's very convenient self-determination. But for Donetsk, it's like way messier because it's partially Ukrainian, partially Russian. And for Kherson and Zaporizhia, it's like, well, yeah, you kind of just, you know, even though these are the most, uh, these were the most pro-Russian areas of the country, this is the actual fair referendum Ukraine held in 1991 to decide on independence. Every region of the country voted in favor, but you can see in the southeast and the, uh, and particularly in Crimea, which is now you know, controlled by Russia, uh, but, um, you know, like it, which has been controlled by Russia for, like, half, most of a decade. Um, if you, if you look at this, it's like, okay, yeah, these are the areas most skeptical of Ukrainian independence. These are the areas with the highest Russian population, and so you can see why over the years this has been maybe dropping and dropping. People saying, does Ukraine need to be independent? As Ukraine moves further from Russia, they feel like it, they're moving further from their homeland, maybe, but, you know, taking places that were 90% in favor of Ukraine, taking places that just happen so, you know, happen, just happen to be the places that Russia took, happen to connect Crimea, uh, which is a peninsula attached to Ukraine and not to Russia, um, happening to take this little peninsula and uh, connecting it to the rest of Russia, it's a little bit convenient, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, and uh, in fact, it's not just seen as convenient by my eyes, it's seen as convenient by basically anyone who looks at this. The Poles weren't denounced as a sham by Ukraine, I mean, but even if they were legit, you'd probably say that. But with the absence of international recognition, it was not monitored independently. You can say this is about, um, you know, like the, the right to self-determination, all you want. And some people probably did vote willingly in favor or against whatever they did. But the majority of people, this was not a fair, true democratic process. While there is a war going on, things will change very drastically. In the same way that like, I don't know, if the US is at like total war with, Europe and, and Asia, so like the coasts are being bombarded every day. You know, if you ask people in South Dakota like, hey, do you wanna become independent? Maybe join Canada? They might say yes in that moment in a way that they wouldn't before or after the war. So taking a moment where not only is there a war going on all around them, because I really feel not just you know, for Ukrainians as a whole, but I feel particularly people in these areas where like, there is a complicated question about the, the status, the future, the past of their country, but also where they are being bombed and uh, you know, like all, all of these military attacks are happening right next to all of their homes. And so some number of those people might want to join Russia right now, uh, might be in favor of independence right now, but does that make it fair and free? 
Again, the answer is no. You need you need international rec- uh, observers to actually look at a rec- uh, to look at an election. This is effectively Russia trolling by being like, "Oh, you guys like self determination, like in Kosovo. You guys love your self determination. You think you think that Taiwan should be independent, or you know, like what's what's the other uh, fun examples around the world? Do you think Palestine should be independent, or which wh- whoever you know, like whichever country you're looking at? In general, we say if you like the country." Uh, if you don't like the country, of course, places should be independent. So you don't like China? Yeah, Taiwan's great. You don't like Israel? Yeah, Palestine. Viva la Palestine. Uh, you don't like Serbia? Yeah, Kosovo deserves to be independent. And if you do like the country, you like Ukraine particularly, you say, wow, you don't like when some of the people in that territory get to decide? That seems hypocritical. You know, like the troll that's like, you said there were no rules, so I just posted uh, your mother's phone number and, uh, a, you know, like, I don't know, very graphic... Um, illegal things. Oh, but there's no rules. You can't get me. And you know, like, uh, yeah, R- Russia is playing the troll game of like, this is just self determination. But to everyone looking at it, it's clear that they're just saying we are done with this war. Effectively, they they don't see themselves going any further. I or if if, if they do see themselves going any further, uh, they're not doing a very good job at actualizing it. You know, they need to uh, believe in themselves a bit more. And so instead, they're saying we'll cut our losses here. We wanted a hundred percent of Ukraine to be a puppet. But if instead we can't take 100% of Ukraine, we'll take 15% uh, to be part of this. I think the most similar analogy, and I think people are going to hate me for this because I, I deliberately avoid talking about Ireland in these videos, is the UK and Ireland. I, Ireland was offered uh, full independence from the UK. Uh, sorry, it was <laughs> they wanted full independence and they were offered full like federalization. Like you can do your whole thing Home rule over there, like is, is what they called it, and so um, it like uh, it was it was something that was offered, and then a whole World War One thing happened, and during that time Ireland said, you know what, we could fight this war, uh, but you know they're much, and, and instead they were in, they were concerned about having independence, and so they they did a lot of like civil war stuff during World War One, and uh, by the end of it, it's like fine, we're done with this, you can be independent, except. Aha, now that you're going independent, we'll take the part of your country that most wants to be a part of us at the time. That was mostly Northern Ireland. It's actually not all of Northern Ireland. And we'll say that is a part of the UK still. And uh, so now, you know, that's where like a hundred years of conflict have arisen there. And so the same thing is happening in Ukraine. Like, okay, we offered you a deal where all you had to do was be friends of us, but we're going to send in bombs to make sure you're friends of us. Uh, all you have to do is be really good friends of us, and then you made us go to war with you, and now that we've gone to war with you and not succeeded, okay, guess we're taking some of your country. The parts of your country that are most likely to be Russian, and then the parts, uh, sorry, most likely to want to be Russian, and then the parts that, uh, you know, connect those parts to the rest of the parts, because we can't have a mess. Yeah, again, this is in Northern Ireland. These are the areas that actually do want to be uh, Russian, Donetsk, Luhansk, and Crimea, and Kherson and Zapsia are like, well... They're there, we could take them, so we're just going to. And uh, yeah, that is something that I think will spend like 50 years, the rest of your life, no doubt, assuming this does go ahead, which it will, uh, the rest of your life will be spent with this area of Ukraine on a map seen as like, well, it's not really Russia, but it's not really Ukraine. You know, like even Crimea, it's been in Russian hands for eight years, most of the ways in and out, because you know, there's technically roads to Ukraine, but how often are those really being used? Most of the ways in and out are via Russia. The people see themselves as a part of Russia. There are Russian military bases as they were before. It's uh, it's it's been, uh, you know, even after eight years, it's like, well, Russia can't just steal territory, but also, you know, if you're trying to be honest about who really owns something, it is Russia, even though that's even though they did it very legally. The same thing will probably be true for these areas. If I had to guess right now, um, it is possible, it is entirely plausible, that Ukraine manages to push back into enough of these places and seize one of them, or two, or, you know, half of all of them besides Luhansk. It's possible that that happens, but now that you now that Ukraine is going to be attacking Russia, things are going to get a lot spicier. And uh, yeah, it's a very interesting thing. Also, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the uh, Zelensky has directly said like, well, if you're annexing our territory, we're not going to have peace talks with you because that's that's not okay. And so uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a whole thing. What what does Russia want from its annexation votes? Let me tell you, uh, they want uh, they want 15% of sovereign Ukraine. And uh, then they'll be able to claim their territories under attack. Like, like I said, weapons provided by NATO and other Western countries. And uh, it can defend the front line a lot easier because it'll be a more direct one. And uh, yeah, what is making the votes a sham? Uh, lots of things. What What is happening though? Russia is effectively growing. I Again, I, I think I want to say that legally speaking, by anyone, any country's recognition, this is not going to be Russia. 
But there's the de facto de jure thing. By law, this will be uh, Ukraine. By reality, this will be Russia. In the same way that, like, I don't know, what's an area if the... You know, this is, this is by law China, but in reality it's Taiwan. Um, there is almost an incompatibility in viewpoints, unless you're just admitting to yourself that, yeah, when I don't like the country, you know, China, um, you know, that their, their, their independent territories are good and are breaking free from the evil land, and when I do like the country, Ukraine, yeah, that, there is the, oh, okay, there, there is the kind of, uh, messy, uh, d thing there, and I don't know what the real solution is besides, it sucks, for my Ukrainian subscribers, I'm sorry to hear that. I have heard that, for, again, besides this part of the country, fighting has mostly died down at this point. Like, if you live in Kyiv, you're in a wartime country, but you're not being bombed every day, which is nice. Tell me if I've got that correct. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I hope that in the future, uh, at the very least, the positive from this is by taking the most pro-Russian elements out of Ukraine, the rest of Ukraine is now going to be much more pro-European, not just because you're taking away demographics, uh, but also, you know, in the same way that if you take out uh, California, now there are fewer Californians in America. There's not no Californians in America, there's just far fewer. Uh, in the same way, you take out the pro-Russians in Ukraine, and now it's just a given that the rest of Ukraine is going to have all this NATO and EU joining. And also it's a given uh, because of the war where Russia, trying to show what a good friend they were, invaded and killed hundreds of, you know, it, it's, it's a fun thing, isn't it? Anyway, speaking of fun things, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, good news for those of you who, I, I know I've been accidentally using the Patreon. I said I would take the Patreon if you want to support more videos like this. Uh, give me money on Patreon. I usually say the money will go exclusively not to funding these videos. I want to be clear and upfront with you about that. I will spend your money on bad, you know, like that. That's not my goal. I'm not going to do the YouTuber thing of like, I just need it for video quality. But I have accidentally, you know, I have accidentally hired some editors. It's been a mess. I know, I'm sorry. Using... The Patreon money to actually improve the videos is sacrilege, and I'd like to apologize right now. This is a mistake that I've made, uh, but I am trying a few new things. I want to find something that works better, and then we can hopefully after that go right back to blowing the Patreon money on, uh, ooh, look, we, we made, we, we went a little bit down. Would you like to see the graph go back up? You know, I'd like to see the graph go back up. Um, so yeah, patreon.com slash toycat, you get zero benefits besides a fuzzy feeling that you support bad videos of a guy literally talking over a map. And isn't that the best sales pitch I've ever given? Anyway, yeah, hope you all enjoyed. Uh, sorry to hear, uh, what's going down in Ukraine. But I think this, in a weird way, it's like, it's really, really bad, but at least it's good in a way that it means a war might end. But, you know, whether the war ends in a place they're in once is maybe the, the bigger question at this point. Anyway, speaking of bigger questions, um, have you considered that I don't care about you? <laughs> Goodbye.